What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about mining in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. First we'll cover why you should level mining and what benefits come with it. Then we're going to discuss the mining routes that you should be taking at each level range. That'll be a step-by-step -step guide which shows which zones you should be in and my favorite routes in those zones. So if you're looking to max mining as fast as possible, stick around and we'll get you there. First, we'll briefly go over why you should level mining. The most obvious reason is that 60 stamina bonus that you get for leveling mining. It's really nice on the gold side of things, and it's a good money maker. It's super easy to make money with it. You literally just fly around in a circle in Sholazar Basin mining adamantite. I also really recommend the add-on Gather Mate. This can really help you plot your routes and make finding nodes easier. So instead of a general route, you'll have a very specific path that you can follow. All right, so the fastest way to burn through the first 150 or so levels would be to just buy the ore off the auction house and smelt it down into bars. This is much faster than running rock to rock and really it's a really nice way to get those first at least 50 or so levels. Smelting copper bars turns gray at level 70, and then smelting iron bars turns gray at 160. And that's why I said 150, because once you get above iron to say mithril, buying that just to smelt it down and then resell it is a huge money loss and not really worth doing. The only time I would say something like that would be worth doing is if you're leveling something like blacksmithing or engineering and you need more ore than you're gonna mine and you have the money to buy it, then in that case, I would probably just go ahead and smelt the stuff down too to kind of save on some of the mining time. But personally, I enjoy mining the old fashioned way and that's what we're gonna look at now. Now that we've talked about why you should level mining and how you can kickstart it by throwing a little money at it and smelting down some ore, let's get into the more traditional way of leveling mining. And I can't think of anything more traditional as just running around and hitting rocks with pickaxes. These first few levels are going to be based off of your race's starter zone, but if you didn't just start out, you can pretty much pick whichever zone you want to spend some quality time with. It's really just easier to get to each of these zones if you happen to start out with this particular race or faction even. So if you're Horde and you're Undead, then you should go to Trisful Glades. And here you're basically going to be making a big loop following the mountain line. Just don't go back into Death Knell because Ore doesn't seem to spawn there. Tarns can run around the outside of Mulgor. And the nice thing here is that mobs won't really be an issue because you're going to be sticking to that outside. And they're also lower level if you have leveled up a little. The one thing you want to watch out for here if you're lower level is the Venture Co. Mine. It's just not worth getting attacked in there, so I would avoid that and just do the Outer Rim and you'll be good. If you started as an Orc or a Troll, you can mine in Duratar, but personally I would just take the Zeppelin over to Trisful Glades and start mining there. There are rocks in Duratar, but it's kind of spread out. That's just my personal opinion though. On the Alliance side of things, humans get a really great mining spot with Elwyn Forest. This is probably one of my favorite places to begin mining. I personally like this path along the right side of the forest, making sure to hit the rocky outcrops along the bottom right below the road as you pass through. You can go down in the mines if the respawn rates for the ore seems really good and there's not a lot of competition, but normally I just stick to this route. With Darnassus being kind of funky for night elves, I like to just go ahead and head to Darkshore. And in Darkshore, you can kind of just mine the outer edge of the zone. It's a really big zone, so wherever you're leveling at, if you're leveling in the top, you can just do a big circle around the top, or if you're leveling in the bottom, you can do a big circle in the bottom. So it's nice to break the zone in half. Dwarves and Gnomes, on the other hand, came out with a really good mining spot. Dunmoreau is just a great place to mine. It's covered in mountains, and you can pretty much mine anywhere that there's a mountain edge or a cave, which pretty much is the entire zone. So this is my preferred route, but you can really blaze your own trail here. All right, for levels 66 to 125, we're gonna be switching over to tin and silver. And the best place to mine these is in the Barrens and Thousand Needles. These zones are on Kalmador, but even on a PvP server, you should be okay going to mine them as an alliance. The mobs on the lower half of the Barrens are around level 25, so you gotta be careful down there if you're low level. I would just cut that part out of my path if the mobs start bothering me. As you get higher level, you can also go to Thousand Needles. You just wanna avoid the raceway because tin and silver don't spawn there. It's actually higher level than that. And when you're in Thousand Needles, you just wanna to stick to the canyon walls. I would like to also throw in, if you are Alliance and you're worried about Horde on your server, 
you can mine tin and silver in Duskwood by doing loops on the outside of that mountain that's in the center with the dragon in it. The last option we're going to talk about is Westfall. So you can mine tin ore in Westfall and the hot spots for that are going to be the Gold Coast Quarry, the Path Below Moonbrook, and the Jangalod Mine but there's going to be copper nodes mixed in with the tin nodes so if you're actually on the upper end of things i would move to dusk wood and then you have a chance of seeing iron nodes but there's going to be more stuff that you can mine it's going to be higher level instead of running around finding a bunch of copper and wasting your time so if you're on that like copper tin side of things i would go to westfall and then if you're almost done with tin moving into iron then i would go to dusk wood so that about covers it for levels 66 to 125. Now we're gonna start talking about 126 to 175 where we're gonna be mining iron and gold. So as you start going through these levels, you need to make sure that you talk to your mining trainer. You don't wanna miss out on levels because you accidentally forgot to raise your cap. I would also like to say that with iron and gold, you have a few good options at this point, but you really want to mount before tackling these levels. The ore is starting to get a little more spread out, the zones are a little bigger, and this can just be super slow on foot. So the primary place I would go to mine iron and gold is Desolus. As I said earlier, this is something you want to do on a mount because this zone is really big, but you're basically just running around a big ring on the outside of the zone. And you want to avoid Shadow Prey Village if you're Alliance, and then if you're Horde, you want to avoid Nigel's Point. But other than that, it's a great place to level. And if you're Alliance and you don't feel like going to the Horde Continent or just getting to Desolus, which can be a chore, another good option is Blasted Lands. So you can navigate around the edge of the zone here, avoiding that right side where the Dragon Whelps are. They're not really worth your time and kind of make it a pain. It is also a good idea to hit where the rock elementals are north of Kargath, and I think there's a cave in there that would be worth hitting. And then you also want to hit that cave at the very bottom left at Camp Cag. So Blasted Lands is a great place to go, and Desolus is a great place to go for 126 to 175. And that about covers it for iron and gold. So now we're going to start talking about Mithril and True Silver for levels 176 to 250. Keep in mind, you will need to uncap your level when you get close to 225, or you're going to run around and mine rocks and not get anything for it, other than the ore, I guess. Which is kind of nice at this point, because mithril ore is usually pretty expensive. The zone I personally prefer for 176 to 250 is Tanaris, and part of that is because I like to follow it up with Ungoro Crater for the next 251 to 300 journey. And that happens to be right next door. With Tanaris, though, you're going to be running around the outskirts of the map again. Um, I've found that the caves with the bugs are really nice. The only drawback, if you want to call it that, is that there are rich deposits that like to spawn in those bug caves, and those require a higher mining level to mine, but they give you more mithril ore. And as I said earlier, mithril is usually expensive from my experience, so the more mithril ore, the better. So even if you can't mine the rich deposits at first, if you keep doing your circles around the zone, you're eventually gonna come back through and grab those rich deposits without a problem. If Tanaris is too crowded or you just don't feel like going all the way over there, another good spot to mine from 176 to 250 is Searing Gorge. And when I'm mining in Searing Gorge, I like to circle the outside of the zone since it is surrounded by mountains. I've drawn out a path on this map which shows this path. I've ran into more PvP issues in Seer and Gorge than Tanaris personally, but I feel like it won't be as bad in Wrath of the Lich King as it was in Classic, and I think that's just because of all the raids going on in Black Rock Mountain, there's just more action going on there, where in Wrath of the Lich King people are going to be pulled in different directions. So I think Seer and Gorge will be a nice mining spot. I personally prefer Tanaris because we're about to start talking about Ungoro Crater, but Seer and Gorge is a solid option too. Alright, so levels 251 to 300, which is the home stretch for the classic portion of this journey. So there are a lot of really good options here. Ungoro Crater is probably the best zone spawn-wise, but it'll be the most contested zone because of that. I like to run around the mountain in the center, as well as the outer ring of the zone. This creates a circle in a circle connected by a single path at the bottom. Another good option is Burning Steps. This actually comes with the benefit of the Dark Iron Ore there. You can get skill ups off the Dark Iron Ore while trying to find more Thorium Veins. So as far as the actual map goes, I like to run around the mountain with the Ogres on the right and then hit up the top and the bottom ridges and just kind of make that a loop. 
Another option is you can mine an Eastern or Western Plaguelin, but I don't usually go those routes because the mobs can be annoying and I just personally don't like the aesthetics of those zones. I would personally just prefer to be an Unguru Crater or Burning Steps. But that's just me and now we should be level 300. So it's time to talk to our trainer again and get ready to go to Outland. Well, we finally made it to Outland and now it's time to go from levels 301 to 325, which is Fell Iron. All right, at this point, the faction doesn't really matter anymore. Hellfire Peninsula is the place to be. With that being said, that means Hellfire Peninsula is a bottleneck and that can make it a really contested area. So while you're in Hellfire, you wanna avoid the Fell Reaver, avoid the elite giants in the Northwest, and then you should be able to follow this path reasonably well and that shouldn't give you too many problems. There's some elites down in the bottom below where like ramparts and stuff are. And obviously you don't want to mine on the right side of the map where there are elites and stuff too. So with that being said, the problem with Hellfire is that it's kind of a bottleneck zone. Everybody kind of converges on that zone for leveling and mining and everything else. And in that case, you might want to go over to Zenger Marsh where you still can find some fell iron if you go along this path at the bottom, but you're going to have a lot less competition, which is really nice. I personally don't like the swampy vibe, so I stick it out in Hellfire. But if you are having trouble in Hellfire, then just run back and forth along this bottom southern border of Zanger Marsh and you'll find a good amount of fell iron ore that way. All right, so once we get to 326, we're kind of done with fell iron and we're moving on up to Adamantite. And to do that, we're gonna be heading to Nagrand. I'm a huge Nagrand fan. Something about the lush green fields and wow just make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. So in the Grand, you'll find a lot of adamantite, and that's what we're gonna be using to level from 326 to 350. You should have less competition here than in Hellfire, for instance, and the PVP stuff shouldn't be as big of an issue as it was in the classic zone, since you can fly now. So just fly around the edge of the zone, and then also do kind of a mini circle around Hala, if you would like. Um, once you reach level 350, you're gonna need rich adamantite deposits, and these can be found in the Grand or Blades Edge Mountains. And that's all there is to it if you really wanna stay in Outland, but you can actually start mining cobalt at level 350. The problem is that you can't mine rich cobalt until 375, so you end up having to pass up on a lot of ore if you go to Northrend at 350, but that's kinda of your call how much time you wanna spend in the Grand versus just heading on over to Northrend. Northrend, whew, we finally made it to some new content. At 375, you can move on to the Howling Fjord and start mining cobalt. You can technically make the move at 350, but you won't be able to take advantage of the rich cobalt nodes until you're 375. So that makes 375 the perfect level to hit up the Howling Fjord. The path I like to take is along the top right portion of the zone. And at this point, it's such a relief to get to Northern that these levels just fly by. You can actually take rich cobalt all the way to 450, although I wouldn't recommend this as Sarnite is usually worth a lot more, but that makes the Howling Fjord a great zone for leveling mining. And it also makes anything else I cover after this point optional. Another good zone to pick up rich cobalt is Zoldrak. Most of the nodes are located in the middle of the zone. So it's a pretty weird looking path. Zoldrak has more rich cobalt than Howling Fjord. So once you get to that point, then this is a solid upgrade for you at 375. The home stretch and the money maker. Oh boy, we finally made it to him at Nessingwary's new hunting ground. Levels 400 to 450 take us to Sholazar Basin where we'll be mining Saranite. Rich Saranite requires level 425 to mine, so you will have to pass it up until you get to level 425, but it's still worth it to come to Sholazar Basin as soon as possible because Saranite is usually worth so much more than Cobalt. Another thing you'll sadly have to pass up if you run into is Titanium. Titanium requires level 450 to mine, but it's super valuable. So when you do get to the point where you're just mining for money, definitely stop by and get the Titanium because it's gonna be super worth it. As far as paths go, I mostly just fly in a big circle around the edge because it's simple and easy and I can like watch Netflix and just fly around the edge. You can deviate from that a little to optimize the path using this map, but I also recommend GatherMate so that you can kind of plot your own more specific paths. The big issue here is going to be that this zone is very competitive because it's a great way to make money. So with that, you can go fly around Ice Crown and kind of hit some spots there, but I personally just go ahead and do the Sholazar Basin and just kind of deal with the competition as it is. And that's really it. We finally made it to 450. We're running around Sholzar Basin, mining Adamantite. We have hit the true in game for mining. We've got our 60 stamina bonus and 
that's just really everything there is to it. It can be a very long journey to get to 450, but it's a really profitable skill to have leveled up and it's a nice stamina bonus. I hope you found this guide helpful. Hopefully the maps can kind of help you with the routes and stuff. Feel free to ask whatever kind of questions you have in the comments below, but that's it for now and I'll see you in the next one.